Do you see color? Do you see color? My name's Pat, and uh, this is my wife, Letha. And <clears throat> I was born in Ohio, working class family. And uh, it was important that it was a white family. And I moved out to Arizona, and I attended a pretty good high school. But my background, half Italian, half hillbilly, as I told one of my teachers, um, was such that I didn't imagine myself going to college, but a lot of my friends were going, so I went to college. I just kind of fell into it. And so I am uh, leading up to the major event in my life, which was meeting my wife, how that happened, what happened after that, will be the object of our discussion, at least for today. We may get into other things. I'm Letha Barrett, or Sweet, and I was born in Gilmer, Texas. I and Johnny Mathis. That's my claim to fame, <laughs> other than marrying him. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, growing up in Texas, I was six when I left Texas. Uh, and that's a whole nother story of being, I call it bust to Arizona when they were bringing blacks to Arizona to pick cotton. And we landed in Stanfield, Arizona at a cotton camp and I thought this must be what hell is because it was hell. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our show. Crossing the color line. And we want to talk about what happened in our lives as this country changed so dramatically that, to give you a little perspective, when we were married in 1964, our marriage was still illegal in 18 states. It took the Supreme Court about four years later to declare all of the laws. Do you know the names of those laws? There was a name. It was They were called anti-miscegenation laws. And the Supreme Court struck them down nationally, so no one could use those laws to prevent people like us from getting married. Even our state, Arizona, had that as a law up until just a couple of years before we got married. And there's a lot more to say about that. And then there was the, the movie, Loving, and the movie Loving just came out recently, and that showed the events leading up, and the people, more importantly. I think the movie did an excellent job of showing really just everyday people who just wanted to get married. Wanted to be married. But at some point in all of this, and I hope some of you ask questions, how all this got started, and how much has it changed from... 1964 when we got married to now what and do you think <laughs> well and I'd say people think we've come up come a ways and for some things we have but for many many others we have not it is ignorance people this country has not talked about race let alone interracial marriages uh, for some reason, people seem to think just because you see African Americans, Mexicans, Native Americans, Muslims on TV, oh, that makes us integrated. We are not, I repeat, not an integrated society. We are a desegregated society. In fact, we know that we are more segregated today than we were when we got married in 1964 because there was still the integration that was trying to be achieved, and all of that has stopped. So now we are a desegregated society. And um, I also think that uh, when you talk about, when we talk about crossing the color line, uh, and all of you people out there who say, I don't see color, well, you are just flat out 
lying you see color. So, and and I want to make it clear that you see color. So, the other, what do you uh, think? <laughs> the, the thing that's funny is uh, there was a comic strip, Beetle Bailey, and it had one of the deepest commentaries on this. Uh, Colonel Halftrack called in the two lieutenants, one white and one black, and he was lecturing them, saying, I hear there's some racial tension on this uh, post, and I don't want to hear any more about that. As far as I'm concerned, everyone on this post is green. Do you hear me? Green. All right, dismissed. Oh, uh, you, the dark green one. I want you to stay back. Of course we see color. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and if we didn't see color, our children wouldn't know the difference in Crayolas, red, black, white. Uh, they wouldn't know the color of cars. And we teach our kids all of those things, but when it comes to people... You want to say, I don't see color. And let me tell you a story. Sweet. When, yeah. when you were a kid and you used crayons, you used to talk about uh, yeah. Crayolas, which one did you pick for flesh color? You know, I don't remember because I didn't have that many Crayolas. I was poor. She was so poor, she didn't even have okay. crayons. I don't remember Crayolas when I was growing up. And you know that's interesting because you just said that, and I do not remember Crayolas when I was growing up. Uh huh. So what was your story? Um, what was I saying? I don't know. You know, uh, I was. Oh, I guess we didn't tell you how old we are, did we? <laughs> uh, so this is our show. Uh, we I'm want you to uh, be sure to like, like us, and, and you know what that little like thing is, and right. subscribe to our channel mm -hmm. because we'd like to share a lot of things with you, but I think it's, we have our perspective, you know, like my perspective about me, that I, the way I see myself, the thing about me that stands out is the fact that I speak a couple of languages. Americans are not known for that. Language is a big thing with me. But other people see us as black and white couple. You know. Now years ago it was more of a big deal than it is now, I will have to say. So when we talk about progress, we do want to look at that. Sometimes in grocery lines, people will ask us if we're together. And, you know, is, is that really, because I see people just the other day when you and I were in the car, and I can't, oh, when we were in, we were driving to San Diego, and mm -hmm. we had stopped at a Circle K, and Pat and I drove up, you know, you and I drove up, and there was this older white gentleman and he was just looking at us. Yeah. Like he had yeah. never seen a couple like us. And I looked at him and he just looked at us. Now, I'm gonna get into, you know, uh, that. When we as people of color, we know when white people are not receptive to, uh, to us, whether you're black or whether you're an interracial couple. People give off cues yeah. as to what they're thinking and what they're not thinking. And this gentleman, he didn't smile, he didn't change the way he looked or anything. So maybe he was just neutral. But there are a lot of white people that will see Pat and me, or me with my grandkids, or whatever, and they will just look at me like, what, who are you? And who do you think you are, et cetera, et cetera. Other people, the way you let us know that you're okay with this, smile, okay? Smile. And I have something to say about white women and black men, et cetera, et cetera. We'll get into that later, but I want you to be listening because I have it, okay? <laughs> um, so the question is, um, as I said earlier, you know, that uh, sometimes the young people, especially in the grocery line or something may, you know, not quite catch that uh, we're a married couple, even though my arm is around here and my hand is in her purse. But um, the thing that really shocks him, if the topic comes up, it's, it does sometimes, how long have we been married? 53 years. That seems to be more shocking than the fact that we're an interracial couple. So that is a reflection of the fact that our society has changed. No one's saying it has not changed. Right. The question is, is the color line 
still there. And that's why we call this show Crossing the Color Line. Mm -hmm. And the color line is very much there. And one of the ways that uh, Pat and I talk all the time, you know, uh, in fact, that was one of the things that first attracted me because he was short. Uh, I'm so still <laughs> short, by the way. <laughs> but that was one of the things. He knew so much more about Africans and African Americans. And at that time, we were called... Negro? Were we called Negro? Or Pretty much Negro, oh, because yeah, I remember Negro. Uh, I referred to uh, one of your nephews when he was a baby as, I think, yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, that was another story. <laughs> Any, anyway, I used to turn black, and mm -hmm. her sister got a little upset yeah, with that. because we weren't black yeah. then. Yeah. And we have evolved, and we can talk about that, too. Names, yeah. Uh, you know, about how we as African Americans... Labels. Labels have evolved from... When my parents grew up, they were colored... And then we became Negro, and then we became African American, and we all decide what label we want to live with, um, and and that's what that we are satisfied with, and that's one of the things I always tell white people. I said, well, you know, if you want to know, well, I don't know what to call you. That's what they use, what they say, lots of times. And I'd say, well, ask me what I want to be called, and I'll tell you. Um, white people, some like to be called Caucasian, you know, and it's really interesting. Many, many young white kids don't even know what Caucasian means. You know, they just know white. Uh, but the labels are what we decide what or who we want to be and how that affects us. Now, let's go back to the color line thing. I know what I was thinking. I <laughs> want you to know that I am African American, okay? Because when you, to, in my mind, when you say I don't speak color, you are denying who I am because Part of who I, a lot of who I am, is the fact that I am African American, um, is that um, that label and how people in this country and other countries see me is part of who I am. So I am very, 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 very proud to be African American, and, uh, and I like the name African American. And I think we can use some of those the battles, we might call them, of terminology and so forth. Um, um, one of the difficulties there is that a lot of people do not know the names of different ethnic groups. Okay. They don't know the names of countries. And uh, we had a very funny story. We um, People don't know where the word Caucasian comes from. Mm -hmm. And we had a, an exchange student at my school, where I taught, uh, from Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a small country located in the Caucasus Mountains. Okay? And the Caucasus Mountains were assumed in the 19th century to be the home of what we call white people. And they were therefore referred to as Caucasian people. Well, what did the people who live in the Caucasus do? Well, they still call themselves Caucasians, right? So the, uh, the exchange student was from a Caucasian country. And uh, one of the girls at school, one of the students, told her, well, I'm Caucasian, by which she meant white. And uh, Lala was the <laughs> student's name. She said, oh, you're Caucasian? So am I. And the girl looked at her, and she was very white. And she said, well, of course you are. And then Lala began asking her what Caucasian country she was from, and the other girl was completely confused, <laughs> particularly since there is also a Georgia in the Caucasus, a country named Georgia. I mean, it was a total, and it was such a beautiful example of how confused people are about ethnicity, and I really would like to say some things about that. Another thing is you've got to keep up with the times. The word Negro, which we have introduced, is still used among African Americans particularly young people. But it's used in a very different way. <laughs> when, when they refer to another African American as that Negro, it is not a compliment. It means something different. It doesn't mean that they're black or African American. 
it means they have taken on a certain role and it is not complementary, as, as I said. So you have to keep up with these uh, changing labels. Af Afro-American is different from African-American. I tend to use Afro-American to refer to people of African heritage throughout the Americas, the Caribbean, South America, etc. Most people don't get that. You know, you'd have to explain it. So these are things we can talk about, and you can certainly ask about. But I think that um, at this point, I would like to know how my dear wife, Letha, feels about doing this show. Oh, I think it's um, our grandson uh, really said to us that he thought that we ought to do this. And uh, since we both like to talk, you know. And we've done workshops and, and all kinds of things on race relation, interracial marriages, raising biracial children. And we used to think you really were knowledgeable about raising children. But, <laughs> <laughs> but now we're questioning that. We're, um, we're more humble. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're much more humble now. But um, I think I'm really looking forward to it. And I hope that you all send us questions because we've been married, as he said, 53 years, and we were, we've been together 55 years. Now, and when she says together, she doesn't mean we live together. Those no, were not in our was, time. You didn't no, do that. You did not you do that. You waited till you got married. Okay. We were engaged. We, were, we dated a year, old-fashioned, engaged <laughs> a year, and then got married. Uh-huh. So, so I think I'm, I'm going to enjoy this, and I hope that we get lots of likes and and questions and everything because we have lived through a lot of the changes in this country such that they have been and we will talk about uh, our feelings about the changes that we've seen and how eh, we're going backward right now um, with you know voting rights um, just what made America great and how I moved from being Po to a uh, cotton picker is what my family was. Uh, we moved to Arizona to pick cotton and, uh, and I like to tell people blacks were brought here from the southern states because that's where we were to pick cotton here in Arizona and people are just shocked. I said no. There weren't enough Mexicans there to pick cotton. So they bust us in, okay? They used busing then because they need needed the cheap labor, all right? So we will talk about any questions that you ask us um, because one of our things is that we feel people use a lot of language that we all think we're in... Um, we're thinking alike and have the same definitions for, yeah. and we don't. Yeah. Uh, like the word racist, <laughs> uh, that's one <laughs> that I am just taken aback when I hear people use racist. And politically correct, that's another There's one. There's a lot of that terminology. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that we talk about among our friends and kids and grandkids and and people, we talk about these things all the time. And when uh, our grandson said that he would like us to do this, we were like, okay. But I think with your help, it's gonna be fun. And you know, um, there, there's also, uh, I have a million stories to illustrate everything, but uh, there's a lot of knowledge that people need to have. And one of the things I'll be doing is uh, bringing out a few books that I found helpful to me in understanding uh, things. And uh, the other thing I would urge you to do, I uh, read newspaper columns on, online and they have a comment section. And <clears throat> a lot of the comments are reasonable. There are some that are not very reasonable. They're, f they're filled with hatred and uh, bad language calling people all kinds of names and so forth. So, if there's something about us, about what we say, that makes you want to 
say something really ugly about us, um, don't tweet it. Send it to us. But think about, when you send it, think about what it is that pisses you off about us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And put it into words. And I know that's, that's sometimes hard. But put it into words. I really don't like you people. No, whatever you want to say. I really don't like you people uh, setting yourselves up as this or that. Or I don't like it when blacks do this or that. And I don't like it when whites do this or that. Because believe me, I've experienced hostility from African Americans too. Absolutely. It's not a you know one way street by any means. And uh, I would like very much, rather than have to respond to one or two curse words, to actually have you think out a little bit what it is that makes you so mad about what we're saying or doing, and write that in. We'd be uh, we'd like it. to, yeah, we'd love to respond mm -hmm. to it, and and. Uh, because we are, we are hoping that people will begin a dialogue. And as we've said, you know, in our intro, crossing the color line, we crossed the color line a long mm -hmm. time ago. So we uh, were, uh, so we've, we've experienced a lot. And uh, just by him being married into a black family and uh and we'll talk about what happened when when i i was dating him and his parents realized we were serious we'll talk about that and and what happened with that and oh we have two children and we have four wonderful grandchildren so we and we are a real uh interracial family. We are really, um, I have nephews that are married to whites. In fact, I have a nephew tomorrow that's gonna get married to a white lady in Utah. And if Stacy and Lou and everybody's watching this, we wish you all a long and happy marriage like Uncle Pat and Auntie has had. Mm -hmm. By the way, it's a lot of hard work. Uh -huh. A lot of yeah. Things. I mean, this thing could go wholly in the direction of marriage, family, and kids. Right. And the whole racial. Because for me, the racial stuff is hardly it's kids, money. <laughs> right. You know how you live your life. And people re like when we were when we were just um, just the two of us, uh, we could deal with uh, the issues like. Uh, uh, people moving away from us, people uh, doing things uh, to us. But when you have children and they are out and they are being hurt, and believe me, my two children were hurt uh, by white people and some black people too. Oh yeah. <laughs> and we will talk about um, the issues, some of the issues with African Americans too, uh, because we we see both sides and we have seen both sides and lived both sides so um so we're really looking forward to what happens now and getting uh likes from you and questions and and everything so that we can uh go ahead and follow through on this because i think our grandson had a wonderful idea uh to do this now question if we talk about these things, are we stop? There's a, no. There's oh. an issue. <laughs> no, our, our director hasn't given us the signal yet. Yeah, um, you know how personal do you get, right? We're pretty open people. Remember, we came up in the '60s, so yeah. yes. And that was, in some ways, that was part of a problem, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that was a problem because. There was a degree of, um, of what can I say? Um, okay. A degree of uh, misunderstanding, shall we say, regarding child rearing, family, money, uh -huh. religion, and a number of things. Yeah. Um, we haven't gone into religion. That was a big factor in my wife's early life. Big mm -hmm. factor. Mm -hmm. 
And and uh, the factor when we got married. Well, you know, yeah. Before that. we got yeah. married. That yes. An issue uh, more than his yeah, color. Yes. It was right, religion. Right. And uh, yeah. And those are, and there's, and that brings up something that I would hope that we could get into as well. I think there's going to be a lot of people, um, and not just whites by any means, who are very unfamiliar with black life, which generally nowadays we call black culture. Um, the way black people think about things, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a huge generalization. However, there are patterns of culture that people follow. And I think a lot of whites would like, I, I, I know because I had a lot of people ask me questions. Um, for example, this is just one that popped into my mind. During the Ebonics controversy, and that I could spend easily a half an hour on and that. he could. <laughs> uh, that's, that's a real sore point with me. Uh, the term is, from a linguistic viewpoint, African American Vernacular English, or Black English is okay, not Ebonics, okay? And I have to know the history of that term and all Ask, of that. what's its name, uh, the one you listen it, to all the time? Yeah, John, John McWhorter has a lot of uh, mm -hmm. good stuff that he's written about that. However, and he's a conservative, by the way, just in case, politically, he's a conservative. He's African American. And, um, but he's one of the top linguists in the United States. So, um, this whole idea of uh, language and why black, I remember one lady at, I, at my work, a, a white lady, and again, I want to go back and say, you know, it's not just whites that sometimes have questions or issues with blacks, the way they talk, the way they act, the way they protest, you know, th those kinds of things. But there are a lot of other ethnic groups in this country that do not connect very well with African Americans. And so um, this one lady came up to me during this Ebonics controversy and she said, I don't understand. I understand the black kids in my class perfectly well. So I had explained her, to explain to her that there are a lot of African Americans outside of Arizona <laughs> yes. in areas in the South, in the inner cities and so forth who do speak a form of English that pre presents sometimes problems in understanding them, sometimes problems in them understanding other people, and most importantly, problems in their education, because they really do speak a, what we call a dialect. And that's a, not because my focus in my life has been on languages. I can talk forever about that, and I won't. I but promise. don't most people speak a dialect? Of course they do, but that, yeah. again, you know, so, I hope to get into some of the, uh, there was a, another lady uh, at the same school I worked at that was upset with a, um, a black teacher we had, we had hired in. And finally, and I don't, she asked, she pulled me aside. I think she, had, well, a lot of the people there knew my wife because she worked at the school next door. And asked me, why does he say ax instead of ask? Why does he say ax? Well, they're great question for me. I have this background in linguistics and language history. And I said, oh, well, that's a word that goes back to Old English, askian. It was askian. And then it changed to axion. In other words, the K and the S sound switched. That has been going on in the language family English belongs to for a couple of thousand years. It just so happens that the white people who came from England and the slaves worked beside spoke a dialect where they said ax. Then the language changed, standard English changed, and it went back to ask. African Americans continued to say ax. The point of the story Many is. Many African Americans, not all. Uh, you have to of say. Course, of course. Okay. Yep. You have to say okay. that. Okay. Okay. So, anyway, the point of the story is when I explained that to this lady, all of her hostility to this guy went away. Oh, now I understand. A little mm -hmm. knowledge is helpful. Okay, so. We need you to like us, and I think we're very likable, and we need you to subscribe. Yeah. Bye-bye. We'll bye -bye. see you next time.